that would have been close instead of me picking the actual record button i was gonna i was about to go live that would have been crazy but anyways yo hello everybody and welcome to the podcast the out of fluff podcast as of course me your host fluff i got the two homies with me as you can see one right here that's the pops the other one is down here, basically over, over, over here is boots. But dude, I hope that all y'all have been doing well and everything is June. So that means final exams is over. I am done with school. Woo boy. Um, yeah, dude, fuck school, man. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't get how uh, a lot of y'all people be like, "Oh, school is amazing." Like, I have such a fun time and everything like that. Dude, school is fucking miserable, bro. Like, it might just be me. Uh, the school I'm going to. I'm going. I went to community college. Um, for anybody that knows, I went to PCC. Uh, dude, fuck those teachers or professors or whatever the fuck they want to be called. There was only like a handful that I've like, am genuinely like, okay, you're a cool, you're a cool guy or you're a cool, uh, you're a cool female or whatever. But bro, like most of them are fucking weird. Or they have like this, they get this weird power trip, like they're working inside of a fucking prestige college or some shit like that, bro. Like, for example, let me, let me give y'all an example. My current, well, my recent, uh, professor, I do not like that man one bit. I was in, um, I was doing business, business communications. Um, I'm not going to say his name because honestly, I don't even remember his name. Granted, I didn't want to remember his name off of the sheer fact that he can't even get regular normal people's names down. But. Dude, this man will come into class and he'll try to tell people and stuff like, you know, put your phones away and everything like that. Which in the beginning is like cool and stuff. But like. Why are you telling? grown ass people that paid to be here to put their phones away at all times oh i'm talking right now you don't need that you can go ahead and close your laptop put your phone in your pocket and stuff like that like granny he didn't say anything that to me but then again i feel like he had this, he's had like the same bullshit of everybody else in that school for some reason they looked at me and they were scared of me Black man walking around by himself, not smiling. Oh, that's a scary one. Like, bro, what? Dude, I'm high as fuck right now. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> like, come on now. It, it was stupid. Even, even like, even trying to like, I'll get there, like I'll drive there. And then if I'm there early, and I know I'm going to get there hella early and then I'll end up like, uh, which call it like smoking and stuff before I go inside. So then uh, I ended up doing that. And then even at that same time, if like, if me, my high self, can I stand you? Then boy, you're doing something fucking wrong. I just want to let you know. So yeah, fuck them professors, bro. I don't got time for all that, dude. I'm 27 years old. I don't need you checking on me like this i don't i don't need you fucking doing bullshit to where you would do it to like a high schooler granted i know that there is like there was people in my class that were probably like you know 18 19 like freshly just out of high school there was probably even some kids that are fucking like 17 or 16 because they're fucking nerds in my class but dude there is no way that you think as a professor, like I, 
I feel like I'm probably I was probably about like a cool not even like double digits up under what he is uh of how like his age is. I may be wrong, but a lot of professors there seem like they're around like my age. Because you know at community colleges it's either you got professors that work at universities or something like well, this is for I guess like my community college, but some of these professors will actually work at universities like um, not even like state universities, but like actual like like UCLA or some shit like that. And then they'll come and work over and fucking like community colleges and shit like that. I know that is a, it was a lot of bullshit, basically, and I wasn't fucking with it. Uh, I felt like I was way too old to be treated the way that they were trying to treat me and I wasn't fucking with it. So fuck school. Fuck that. Oh, there was a time where I got my fucking I got a door shut in my fucking face that's a thing that was crazy like dude why are why are you shutting doors in my face and i was on time and they tried to tell me i was late and then closed the door in my face so um yeah nah i'm not dealing with that not dealing with that no more i think it's more along the lines of like a lot of cali people that i'm just it's i don't know they're fucking weird bro a lot of these uh, Cali people are weird as fuck. But I'm not about to go into that. There's no... I'm done with school. I'm going on to making uh, video games. I'm going to be a solo developer until I actually make enough money to where I can hire people. Because eventually I am going to need to hire like actual like game devs and stuff like that. Which I'll probably do more along the lines of um, Unreal. Un Unreal, unless Unity. Um, how can I put it? Unless Unity changes like the pricing, I will be on Unreal. I would say Godot, but honestly, what I'm trying to make more is multiplayer type games. I want the studio to be focused more along the lines of multiplayer games of you playing and enjoying games with other people granted i know there's a lot of people out there that's like you know they rather have single player games or like they play games by themselves and stuff like that yada 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 oh well my my main focus is multiplayer people i like the i like the fact that you can be able to either compete against people like PVP wise or something like that, or you're competing for like leaderboards, like you're trying to be on the top of the leaderboards. It makes it to where it's like, you know, more fun and stuff like that. Oh shit. That or even having like that PVP or even going into, you could say like co-ops and stuff like that. Or like, I want to do like party games or like couch, like couch co-ops. Like you don't see a lot of games out there anymore that really does couch co-op and it makes sense of why but i would just love to have that option inside of games especially games that are that are co-op and i don't want them to be like regular regular degular multiplayer type games where you see all the time where it's like you're either shooting or it's a moba or it's an mmo or something like that like i'm i would rather try to get more creative and bring out more genres like having a multiplayer uh deck builder like um i'm not gonna say for what i'm doing right now but i am working on a multiplayer on a multiplayer type of like deck builder then there's like you can have like turn-based multiplayer games you can like mix in all like a lot of these different genres like a turn like a turn-based roguelike multiplayer game make something like that or some shit like that you know Something that's different to where people can expand like their minds out or you can reach like other audiences and try to get them into playing more games. Like say, for example, like Elden Ring. Elden Ring is a Souls like game. If you don't know what a Souls like game is. Obviously, this section isn't for you, <laughs> but they're just hard games. Honestly, they're just hard. But. Yeah, you got a whole bunch of people that just got into playing Elder Ring. Elder Ring is a wonderful, amazing game, and it's a Souls-like game. So, I look at all, all the people that has played Elder Ring. 
that has to be like the number one most popular souls like game because it brought in so many people into the genre that is what i want to do but on a multiplayer standpoint that is what i want to do so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do that and then as i'm like solo developing games and stuff like that then i will also you know uber uber either uber or lyft or some shit you know get some extra money because uh i gotta live I don't, I'm not, and then I'm not a big fan of working at a job, dealing with uh, other people and their time schedules and stuff like that. Cause then it'll, then I have to put my time schedule around their time schedule. And I'm not doing that. I'm honestly, not. So it's just better for me if I end up doing Uber and then I can be able to, to do soul developing and develop games so I can make my own time schedule. I hung on my whiteboard. I just realized. Oh, that's Boots. Right there. Yeah. He over there uh, sleeping in Pops' ass. But crazy. Yeah, though. I am glad I'm finally done with the exams and I can finally start to fully do what I want to do. And not really have much of distractions. It actually makes me hella happy. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now on to the next on on to the next on to the next on, on to the next. Um before I get into the uh next topic, I do want to end up telling y'all that I am bringing in for uh anime reviews and anime recommendations. So there will be a little segment part for that. So just know, I'll let y'all know um, what it is before I even start. But I'm just letting y'all know every podcast now, there will be some type of like anime review or recommendation or something along the lines of like that. I need to start incorporating more anime into my stuff. Like I don't watch anime almost all the time, either anime or play games, which I'm, I'm thinking about also bringing in more game reviews since I do do this once a month and I can try out a new game and put in a good amount of time for it within like one month. So there'll be like probably around 10 to 20 hour, uh, 10 to 20 hours worth of basically like me playing it at least. And then I'll end up uh, giving it a review a review or whatever the fuck. But yo, I know. Yeah, I'm trying to bring in more reviews. Honestly, I just want there to be more of a like organized podcast, bro. While I can still do the same thing that I've been doing for this whole time. So, yo, yeah. trying to organize it. But yeah, just a little update just for this. But let's go ahead and fully get back into the main things of what I want to talk about. But. Uh, just to start off, wait, what's say the 17th of June? Crazy. Hey, hey, yo, World War Three is definitely 100%. Not want to say 100%, but World War Three is definitely, I would say, cool, like 84.3% chance on the way. Because they getting ready. And me being 27. I can only laugh at y'all. <sighs> Crazy. Imagine being, imagine right now, you're at the age of 18 to 26. And now you're being automatically selected into what the selective service or whatever the fuck like that. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. I didn't really do that because, um, I served my full time of uh, four years active, four years inactive. So I just laugh at this shit, but I, I think it's hilarious. But yeah, no, it's pretty crazy. And a lot of people are, they didn't read the full lines or whatever, but I could have sworn that it's, this isn't just for males. Females, welcome to the party. Males have already been doing this selective service it's just now it's automatic for them but now it's automatic for you crazy bro that's yo <laughs> 
World War Three gonna happen and y'all really gonna be out there slaying. Slay Queen? Go ahead, Queen Slay. Oh, period. Period. Get your ass out there, bro. Y'all about to be out there. Bow, 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 bow. Slay, bitch. Bow, bow, bow. I can already see it happening. That's weird. That's, that's going to be funny. Get a whole bunch of... Uh, they do like a draft and then you get a bunch of whole a whole bunch of uh a ghetto chicks together and they just like <laughs> about half of them go nah but uh a little bit of jokes aside though crazy females welcome to the party that's wild i wasn't expecting that you know i guess you got to keep us guessing I, they do stuff to keep us guessing, bro. We don't know where it's going to go. But uh, I bet you now some of them is like, yo, this, this equality thing, that can go right back. <laughs> They're probably, some of them probably like, bro, that equality shit, go right back. I'm trying to be traditional. I want to be traditional. Well, some of y'all legit f were fighting for this equality, and I'm happy for it. I support I support uh, equality 110 percent. Okay, equal lefts and equal rights don't matter to me. Equivalent exchange is what I base my life upon. I lied. I don't base my life upon that, but I do. I do kind of fully believe in it. So, just saying, crazy. Hey, but now I mean, look at it this way: if y'all do go to World War Three, just know the benefits after y'all get done. Like if y'all stay in the military, you know, because y'all already there, might as well stay in. I didn't get them benefits. Some people, it may be better for y'all to just stay in the 20 years and retire because you get that retirement money plus the disability, which AKA means around six to seven K every month for the rest of your life. Please take that in. Uh, but even like, you know, even if it's just like you go in and now like you spend like your spend like a full term in and stuff like that, bro, the benefits are going to come out. The, the benefit, some people, how can I put it? Some people sleep on a lot of the benefits of what the military can actually give you. I even been sleeping on it before. Um, I just learned something recently, which a lot of people probably don't even know. I didn't even know, but there's a program or whatever. Well, in California, at least. There's a program that's called, I think is V-R-N-E or V-R-E-N. One of those two, look it up. Then I'm not good with words. And I my memory sucks, bro. Just look that shit up both ways. But basically, it's a program and you can transfer the rest of your GI Bill into that program as long as you have some of the GI Bill left and it's not fully like depreciated or depleted i meant then fucking you take that and then you sign up for that program and stuff and that program oh shit my bad i'm i'm sorry you guys but that program ends up helping you complete whatever degree that you're on track to complete so you still get after your gi bill would have been like fully like used and everything, then you would have had to pay. But this program lets you to where you don't have to pay and then you can keep on having the same benefits to where you'll still have your housing allowance. Then you'll still be able to finish college and stuff like that without really much of problems. So that's something new that I just learned, uh, I think like sometime last week or two weeks ago. And I never knew about it. And 
for those that are either looking to join or currently in right now and you want to you wanted to know more about that there you go there's there's a little bit of benefits that they do not tell you like it's crazy like there's so many benefits out there that they just don't tell people but yeah and for those that are currently active right now do not listen to any dumbass sergeant because it's going to be it's 100 percent one of them there's always one or a dumbass staff sergeant or any like staff just in general basically bro if they say or complain about you going to medical fuck them they are they are an op bro they are 100 percent an op if they complain about you always being on light duty they are an op 100 percent an op they are not for you they are not for your wellness they don't care about you just know that because if you decide that you only want to do four years or like it, if you want to get out before you end up retiring or you just want to do your first term or whatever basically just know disability is pretty nice bro and if you can get that 100 percent disability it's pretty nice and what they don't tell you because apparently there's some people that are getting past 100 percent like one dude is um I think he said he's getting he only spent like uh one term basically in like four years or whatever like one or two terms and he stayed in and then he ended up getting out bro is getting paid like 5k for the rest of his life granted he's probably like hella messed up or whatever but bro go to medical go to medical stop listening to these old ass niggas that are just going to stay in the military the whole time, bro. Go to medical, get your light duties, get all the documents, get everything documented, bro. It makes for getting like 100% disability the easiest thing in the world. Because if you have it all documented, they have no choice but to be like, this happened here. So, yeah. Cause right now I went in to for my ears because I failed my audio uh test twice while in the uh military and then I came out and then they do a different audio test outside of it, which I think is crazy because it should they should both be the same. I don't know why there's different tests. Bro got me talking and stuff. But it's like if you if you heard a sound or anything, you're supposed to say it. But it doesn't matter if you got the word right or not. Because I purposely was getting words wrong just to see what the fuck he would say. It as long as you heard something, it it doesn't matter, bro. So just take that into account. The audio tests are not the same as the one in the military. Mainly, just do everything in the military. Get get all that shit tested, done while in the military and you'll be set bro you won't have any struggles they won't even take you to these tests to go get done to see like you know oh if you're telling the truth or not because that's basically all that it is so that's just a little word of my advice or something like that for anybody that is currently active or was looking to join in the military if you're looking to join in the military um do yourself a favor and if you have done drugs lie okay lie and stick to that lie don't say anything else they will try to get you to say whatever bro just be like duck i never done it me personally i said i done it because the recruiter ended up calling me while i was high as fuck so that's whatever though but say that and then you'll be you'll be cool then join um air force <laughs> bro either join the air force or um i don't know about the coast guard i know that they're training 
for boot camp is closer to as being as hard as uh the Marine Corps. But I don't know. I wasn't a Coast Guard. I just heard rumors. But either Air Force or Navy, pick one of those two. You don't go to the Army. The Army's ghetto. That's just ghetto as hell. It's starting to get filled up with more gang related activities and stuff like that. And yes, in the military, there are gangs. I don't. I don't to think that there won't be gangs in the military is thinking that it won't rain on a Tuesday, but is is it can happen 100%. We don't get paid that much in the military. Dude, I know people that were like drug dealers. Come on now. <laughs> like what people, people, yeah, people will sell drugs and everything in the military as well too. So that's more along the lines than like the army and the Marines. Cause once you get treated like shit, you start acting like shit. And, uh, both of those is basically day one. So just take that in. But yeah, man. And honestly, the National Guard, dude, I don't know what they do. But if they had the same benefits and everything, I would choose them. I would say go for them too. My dumb ass picked the Marine Corps. I was like, bro, I'm a challenge myself. Yeah, I challenged myself to fucking lose IQ points, bro. I lost brain cells, motherfuckers. That's what happened. I challenged myself to be stupid. That's what I did. And for anybody that's out there that's in the Marine Corps right now, and you take offense to it, that's because you are fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's strictly to only the Marines out there. I've seen way too many people eat crayons. Literally. Bro, and it's, it, it blows my mind. And I can't even say it's just like a race thing because I've seen multiple races do it. So it's a, it's a Marine Corps thing, bro. People are stupid in the Marine Corps. You lose so much. You lose. Bro, I don't know. I can barely even like type, write, talk, or whatever the fuck from time to time. It's like, it's like being a kid and you got dropped 15 times by the microwave. That's, that's who's in the Marine Corps. Bunch of fucking idiots. Especially the higher up ones too. They're even more dumb because they still got, they, they got their ass whooped all the time while they were like, like E3s and E4s and shit like that. So I don't know. Apparently you can get, they're, they're stupid. Just know they're pretty stupid. That's enough of my rant about military. But um, rip to World War Three. Y'all will see me probably in a different country. So, yo. Uh, what else did there be? What else did there be? Uh, 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 uh. All right, cool. So now that I got those main topics out of the way, bro, let's go ahead and get into the anime review. All right. Starting off. Starting off. I'm going to be talking about Shangri-La Frontier. Now, for those that don't know what Shangri-La Frontier is, it's an anime basically about like this kid. And he's like a trash gamer. So he plays horrible games that are like buggy and stuff like that. Or there's like cheaters all inside of it or whatever. He plays games like that and he raids them and stuff. But and he finds like little glitches and stuff like that. Basically, he, he gets deep into like the games like that. But now he's actually playing a legit good game. Like a legit really good game that almost everybody plays. And of course, it's like a virtual reality game, dude. I really want to make one of those. I'll talk about that later though. But it's like a like a virtual reality, but you're actually going into it, into the world. So you're moving the body as how like you'll move the body in real life and stuff like that. But God, it's really good, man. It's one of those it one of those animes that like you're watching it and then like after like the second third episode you're like bro 
I need to go play a game, bro. And it's not like, it's not like, you know, you start to feel like it's not like just a regular, like, oh, let me go play like an FPS, a shooter or anything like that. Or like, you know, you're going to go play a, uh, a sports game or anything like that. Like, bro, this anime legit makes you feel like you want to go play like an MMORPG or you want to go play a fantasy game or you want to go play an RPG game or something like that. Like something that's basically out of this world type of game. Like it's, it's just a really good anime. I like the way that it's written. I like the characters, um, except for the little rabbit or bunny. She's kind of annoying, but I mean, I guess like they're everywhere in almost all animes. Like that's just something that I just look past. Now there's always that one annoying character. And that is that one annoying character. My bad. The light was blind in my face. Or I don't know what reason, bro. I have the sun out. That shit is crazy. But. Yeah, no, nah, dude. Uh, I would definitely fully recommend that. I would say. This year, if we're going to go down the list of what I categorize for like rating a game. Um. One, of course, the story out of, I would say, like a cool 10. I would give the story a good, like, either 8 or 9. Honestly, there is some stuff that I'm like, that kind of doesn't make sense. Or he, like, should have never been able to do that and stuff like that. But that's why I would give it that main, like, 8, between 8 and 9. Uh, Character-wise, the I think the characters are actually pretty well like written and actually the character design of it is actually pretty nice too even though i know it looks goofy when you go see it that it's it's like a bird head bird head dude and then with the like no shirt and then shorts and stuff like that but he has markings all over him it explains that but in a sense it also shows like you know this is how legit people look like while they're playing a game like thinking about that inside of your head as well as like, of course, like your character is going to look goofy as fuck. Like you're not going to have some master class looking like armor and stuff like that. Like you in, in the beginning, your person is supposed to be looking all crazy and stuff because you're going based off of just straight like, you know, stats like like you're building off of stats. You're not building off of appearance. You don't build off of appearance until later on in like late games if some games let you just build off of appearance and then you keep the stats or whatever but yeah man it's pretty it's pretty cool uh, i don't want to get like into like the deep details of it but the the world building of it i think is pretty amazing like you gotta because you gotta think about it like as in a game way as well like they they built this game to where it progresses and like people can actually fully die like they won't get respawned and stuff like that so it's pretty nice like story elements uh end up changing and stuff like that so it's pretty cool it's it's nice to see like what would happen and everything and it's nice it's nice to see that they go back to the original world because I'm getting, I get tired of seeing like isekais and stuff like that, or like gaming, gaming games, like not gaming games, but gaming animes. Like they just try to stick to where the story and the plot and everything is just in this one area. But like, bro, bro, they like, they show his family of what they do. They all have like different types of hobbies, but they all have to get together twice a day to eat together and stuff like that at certain times. Like it's, it's pretty nice to see like what they do outside of the game. So I don't know. The season two is going to go on for another, another two cores. So basically two seasons, uh, another 20 something episodes, pretty fucking dope. I like it. It's been one of my favorite animes for 2020s. I think it's actually in my top 10 animes of all time. I think it's really great. Any anime that can be able to impact you in like real time and real life and make you want to go do something is a good anime, bro. Let's be honest. It's a good anime.
Like a lot of people say like, you know, favorites and stuff like that, but a really good anime would end up making you feel like you want to go do something. So, hey, that'll be lit though. But anyways, man, it's, it's so, it's so fucking dope. Well, this is there. The fights, the fight scenes are actually pretty nice. And the animation is actually pretty nice for it too. The animation, I wouldn't say what, let me take this back. There's some really good fucking animated points, bro. And whenever he's fighting that samurai dude, mm, that was a really good fight. Yeah. The, some of the, some of these fights are really good and they fully make sense bro and it i feel like they can really only get by with doing fights like this because it's in a game i'm not gonna go into what happens during the fight because i'm not spoiling any fights or anything like that all my anime reviews would try to be as spoiler free as possible but that fight was a really good fight that was a really good fight i like it really good i think i covered mainly all the bases story characters world building animation fighting um is there anything else that i know i think that's about it huh kind of all the main elements dude honestly if I was to rate Shangri-La Frontier, I would have to rate it a cool probably around like a, I give it like an 8.8. .8. It's like an 8.8 .8 out of 10 for an anime. It's a really good anime. If you're really into gaming, check out the anime. Like if you're really into gaming and you like anime or like you're trying to like get into anime, you want to know where to start. If you're a hardcore gamer, there you go, bro. You will relate to this anime so fucking much. Because it's like, it's like parts to where it's like, bro, he's not letting the game beat him, bro. Why would I let the game beat me? <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty cool. I really, I really enjoy the show. I think it's really nice. So y'all go ahead and try it out. I fully recommend it. With all my heart, I recommend it. Cool. And last, oh, this is the last topic. Ooh. But the last topic is definitely, uh, this is about my dream game. And I'm only bringing this up on the fact that if somebody ends up hearing this, then they can start making it because I personally don't think that I would be able to make it until probably way later on, like way, way later on in life. And then I'm going to be like, damn crazy. But honestly, it's not even that crazy of like a game, but it's just you, all it is, well, actually, I can't make this. Why am I being so fucking difficult? But I'll make it later. But basically, it's just you and your friends, and it's a VR type game. How can I put it? It's it's a VR party game, basically. So you can think of it as like Mario Party, but you're on the VR. And you're not dealing with that whole board or whatever, moving around, trying to get a star and stuff. You'll be mainly focused on more of playing just all the different mini games that you can be able to play with other people. You know what I mean? And then you actually like do like the actual movements and stuff like that as well, too. Like you can move your person around and then you will actually be able to move as well. So if there's like any like little miniature like 
uh, runs or something like that, then you can be able to do that. I just uh, recently found out about uh, there's these this man made an omnidirectional treadmill, but they're like look like little hexagon pieces and stuff like that. But it looks like you just like connect them and it's like on the floor and then you're able to like walk on them or do whatever. And it will simulate you walking in the game. So I think it's pretty fucking cool. So I really want to be able to use that and then just be able to make like party games and stuff with it. And then I would like it to have, of course, as I said before, the options of couch co-op. So if you would have it to where it's like, oh, you want to bring like friends over or something like that, and then they can be able to play the game. Or if uh, any like companies out there, since there is more like VR arcades that are coming out now, then they can be able to have like a whole uh, station or whatever just for that game. But yeah, dude, that's that's really what I want to be able to make. I want to be able to make more of a physical, active game that is just fun. There's no like, there's no really like kind of like story to it or anything like that. It's it's like Wii Sports. Wii Sports ain't got no story, but it was a banger. Like, of course, I did the boxing, the ball headed black dude. You gonna have to see me for sure. But him, where was I fucking going with this? Oh yeah, we sports. Basically, I'm trying to have a game that's like that, but not like actual sports type stuff. Like there may be some sports little party games in there, but for those that know about party games, yeah, man, it's it's gonna be like that. But I want it to be more VR like, and then I want to add in like different elements into it. I'm not going to go deep into it, but the core game will be like you're playing like mini games or like party games with other people basically. But yeah, and of course, I like competitive. I like there to be more competition. I am more of a fan of like, you know, like people shit talking other people on games. I like guess it feels like it's more a part of the culture, but that's what I like, man. That's that's the whole point to have fun. Talk your shit. Basically. So that's why I'm going to do that eventually whenever I get into the VR stuff. But that would be more along the lines of whenever I would have a team, because honestly, the game engine that I'm using right now is just GDevelop. There's not really much to it. I mean, just today they put in the beta for multiplayer games, which I am hella fucking excited for, stoked, whatever the fuck word that you want to say. So yeah, man, it's pretty fucking cool, but I can't wait. But before I fully end this, I keep ending like before a fucking hour but <laughs> but before i end this um there was a question that was kind of brought to me earlier and i'm gonna just leave it at that but the question is is just if you're it's, for example like how can i put it if your parents wasn't your parents right so if your mom wasn't your mom or your dad wasn't your dad, would you be friends with them? And I dude, that was a hell of a question. And I, me personally, I would probably have to say no, but being raised in a black household, they thrive on that whole thing of I'm not one of your little friends. I'm your mother, blah, blah, blah. We're going to keep it a stack with you. You keep that same energy because you didn't want to be my friend. Basically, we will never be friends. Okay. Y'all said that. <laughs> Just no parents. Y'all are the ones that said that. So if your kids ever like say, or you ask your kids that question and they ever say no, 
that's because of you. All right. That's 100% on you. <laughs> that's wild. So, yeah. Just take that into account. But crazy y'all think about that question if you made it this far y'all let me know in the comments of basically if your parents weren't your parents would you even be friends with them mine is no but that's just how i was raised so either way anyways y'all stay blessed out there have a wonderful day wonderful month i will see y'all back i actually have it written down boom july 13th so on saturday will be the next podcast episode 12 but this will be it for episode 11 thank you all again for coming enjoying y'all probably um i don't know y'all probably just heard me rant a lot i don't think this is much of that funny of a podcast for this episode it's just more of me talking my shit but whatever. But yeah, y'all end up staying blessed. Have a wonderful day. Peace. Peace.